Today on Nurse Minder, we are talking all about poop. Yes, I said it, poop. We're going to look at the heme occult blood test that we're using to test for fecal occult blood. We're going to look at why we're doing it. What do our patients need to know? What do we need to know to collect the best sample to improve the accuracy of this testing? And we're going to do that all right after this. Welcome back, my name is Tammy and this is Nurse Minder and on this channel we do everything nursing. So if you're new here, consider subscribing below so that you get the next video when it's released. Alright, so one of the first things we need to know is what the fecal occult blood test is and is not. It is a screening tool. It is not diagnostic and that's an important detail to remember. This is simply letting us know if there's blood in the stool that we cannot see with our eyes. That's why it's called a cult. It's hidden. This blood might be coming from a peptic ulcer, GI inflammation, maybe they had a nosebleed and it's kind of made its way through. We can't see those pieces and so this is simply just going to tell us is there blood present in the stool or not. Now if we're using the old Hemocult 2 testing strips, there's some very specific information that our patients need to know and we need to gather to improve the accuracy. So let's take a look at the things that can cause false positives, false negatives, and what our patients need to know. A false positive result can occur if our patients consume red meat, are taking medications such as aspirin, NSAIDs, corticosteroids, anticoagulants, and chemotherapy, or consuming excess alcohol. When it comes to a false negative, we're looking for vitamin C. Did I mention vitamin C? Yes, I did, vitamin C. We want to avoid an excess of 250 milligrams a day, so we're looking to see how much is in our supplements, if they're taking fruit juices and iron supplements. So what does this all mean for our patient? Well, essentially, we have some timelines and some teaching that we need to do. Seven days before beginning the test and to continue during the collection of samples, we want our patients to avoid NSAIDs now they can take acetaminophen, that's fine. Three days before the test, and again during the sample collection, what we want for our patient to do is to avoid red meats and avoid excess vitamin C. In looking at our sample kit, we see that we have three applicator sticks inside and one slide test card. When we open this up, you'll see that the test card is actually a series of three testing kits. I've gone ahead and already labeled the information that you'll put on your patient's card. You may be using a patient ID sticker or if they go home, they'll need to label this with the relevant information. There's also three sample collecting sticks inside. We're just gonna keep one out for now and I'm gonna show you next how to collect the sample. So I'm going to open up my first testing strip and you notice that there are two areas labeled A and B. This is where we're going to put our stool sample. Collecting a stool sample will require a dry clean container and you want to catch the stool before it contacts the toilet water. To demonstrate the stool collection, I've got some peanut butter here in a clean dry container. Taking the end of your applicator tip, you will select a small amount of stool from one side of the stool sample and you will put a thin smear in column number A. Of course, you should be wearing gloves, and I forgot to put them on for demonstration, so please make sure you have your gloves on. We need to then take a second sample from another area of the stool. So I'm gonna to go to the top end here, and we're going to then smear this into column B. Collecting samples from two different areas will increase the likelihood that we can identify if occult blood is present. Once the sample is collected, we're simply going to close this, secure it under the tab, and we want to leave this sit for 24 hours to air dry. Completing the set of stool samples will require that we collect samples on three different days. Now there are some important considerations for this as well. If blood is visible in urine or stool, such as when you have menstruation or you have hemorrhoids, do not collect a sample on that day. We also need to return the completed set within 10 days after collecting the first sample. 
that is our lesson on poop. Until I see you next time, make it a great day and be sure to subscribe to these videos that you're seeing popping up here so that you can stay connected and be notified when the next video is released.